I am going to go ahead and get started with our two premier professionals. Again, thank you so much for joining us to talk about health, which is so important right now. Um, so I'll let you introduce yourselves. I've already introduced you to a degree, but um, Angela, if you want to start, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then um, Christopher, if you would like to go next. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, again, I am Angela Hurley, uh, working at Cliffdale Elementary School as the physical education teacher. I've been teaching for over 18 years now. Um, at one point, I was the healthy eating and active living liaison for Cumberland County Schools, where I worked with several schools within the district, setting up uh, wellness teams. So um, that's just a little bit about me. And my name is uh, Chris Drawn, and I've also been teaching a little over 18 years. Um, I've coached, uh, and prior to coaching and teaching, I actually ran a nutrition and wellness center in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we worked with a wide group of individuals, not just uh, adults, but also children. Uh, so health is certainly a very important uh, topic for me. Thank you both so much for bringing your expertise to the room and having a very important conversation. So we are getting ready to close out the school year. And one of the things that we know that students get to experience in school is some physical education and physical activity. You both are um, in our schools working hand in hand with our students. Can you tell us about some of those, those main issues that you've seen with school-age children that you work with? What? Well, one of the most uh, obvious things that you see is the rates of childhood obesity. Um, it, it's an amazing coming from, you know, teaching high school, I saw it, but now that I've been in elementary school for 14 years, one out of every five children is considered obese, which means their, their body fat percentage doesn't line up with what their height and what their weight should be. Uh, so certainly obesity is a big, big factor. Um, I would say also um, I'm noticing a lot of uh, low energy level with the kids. They don't have um, that get up and go um, like we used to have back in the day. So I noticed that as well as um, they're not hydrating a lot. Um, right now, with the schools kind of opened up and we have some at school and some at home, the students that are at school, um, our water fountains have been closed, so they were unable to get a lot of water, not unless they brought their own water bottles with them, um, and they can do it within the classroom. I'm at an elementary school as well. Um, but then the students who are at home, they have a variety of things to choose from, so they tend to go to the juices instead of going to the water. So um, them not hydrating was a big factor as well that I noticed with the kids. Um, on top of um, when we talk about our physical health, we got to talk about our mental health as well. Um, and that's a big piece that I'm noticing for the students. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things that we know when we um, kind of were out of school due to COVID-19, it took away the academic piece to a, in the traditional sense that students weren't face to face. But one of the big things that students receive in school is that physical education and that activity. So how do you suggest that parents help their students to maintain this during the summer? How do they help their students to maintain that physical activity during the summer? Um, well, for me, what I would say is, um, I am favorite to be able to work at Cliffdale Elementary. So we have the rec center there. So I would say if you could um, get your kids involved in some of the recreational uh, team sports or individual sports that they have available, um, that's one thing that you can do. Um, you can also keep it simple. You know, when COVID first hit and we couldn't go to a lot of places, a lot of the bikes were out uh, from people now doing things within the community as far as riding their bikes. I would say continue to do that. Ride your bikes in the neighborhood. Um, it's, Fayetteville is growing and there's so much that's going on. To, I would say explore Fayetteville. Take them for, for walks downtown Fayetteville. Take them for, um, we have the Cape Fear River Trail 
We have Clark Park. Um, these are places that, that you can go and enjoy as a family. Um, those are some of the things that I would suggest. Explore the city while you're still trying to stay active. And I wanna add something to what uh, Angela said. I, I have two children, both are in middle school, one's getting ready to go to high school. And one of the things that we always did was look for low cost ways to be active. So what she's talking about uh, with the Cape Fear River Trail or, or going and exploring federal, these, these are things that do not cost any money as far as physical activity. I would also add that federal and Hope Mills have added several splash pads uh, splash pads do not cost any money. It's a great way for the kids to go have a good time. Uh, Westover uh, has a community pool that only costs a couple of dollars. You can take your family for the entire day and not spend more than $10 mm. there. Now, as far as options that do cost, uh, there are the jump parks that most of the time they will offer some type of package to where you can take your child and let them jump as much as they want to over the summer. It does cost a little bit more, but you can take them and they can have fun uh, doing that throughout the entire summer. Um, I believe Angela also mentioned the river trail, but you know that's one of the things that we, we really want children and families to be able to just get out and explore. We've been cooped up for a year <laughs> And have, there's been a lot that's been happening within our communities that we haven't even seen. So just get out and explore and see what's happening within the, the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say this too, uh, because it is summer, one of the advantages to students being in school is they are on a consistent schedule when they're in school. And I would suggest making a consistent schedule with your, with your children it doesn't have to be as regimented quite as school, but if you keep a consistent schedule, uh, they're more likely to, you know, see what their goals are and work toward them. One of the things that I've run into with, even with mine over the years, you tell a child to go outside and play and they go outside for five minutes and they come back in and, and they, they're like, well, I went outside and I played. <laughs> but, you know, as far as keeping a consistent schedule, I would say, hey, Set a timer. When that timer goes off or your cell phone goes off, then you can come back in. So we're mm -hmm. going to set a, a schedule, 45 minutes or 30 minutes. That's how long you need to go and play. Uh, because that's one of those things where I remember when my parents used to say, go outside and play. I understood what that meant. Don't come in until the street evening. lights come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Yeah. And there's you all both mentioned some great activities that um, children families can do together during the summer and we know that in the physical education classes um, they do a lot of activities um, you all teach them how to make healthy being healthy fun so what are some of those exercises if they're kind of going to still be around the house or at their grandparents at a relative's house during the summer um, break. What are some activities that are great ways for students to get some of that exercise, physical activity in? You want to go ahead? Sure. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to treat this just like I was uh, teaching one of my classes. Uh, create fun challenges. When when we use the word exercise, exercise is one of those things that is many times ingrained within our minds that is hard, that it's not, not going to be fun. And one thing I would suggest uh, when we talk about creating fun challenges is say to, say to a child, say, hey, I bet I can do more jumping jacks in a minute than what you can do. Children love challenges. Adults love challenges. Mm -hmm. And just adding those little things in there, we're not talking 30 minutes, we're talking just a few minutes here and there, but before you know it, it builds over time and they've gotten in a lot of physical activity just in that amount of time. Um, when I think of the games that we play in school um, and then taking it to the house, I'm thinking of old school. Uh, take do the old school games that we used to play. The kids still love tag like we used to love tag. So freeze tag um, is another one. 
Um, playing red light, green light with them is another fun game that they can play. Um, hide and go seek, they love that. Scavenger hunts, you can do it at home or you can do it while you take them to the park. If you have multiple siblings, you can have one child to hide items throughout the yard and then have enough the rest of the kids to go try to find it, see how quick they can find the items. You know, just being creative like that are some things that we can do. We, we constantly try to teach our um, the elementary about locomotor skills. So you can do fun things like, let's see the different ways that you can go from the driveway to the front of the house, whether you can tell them to skip from the driveway to the to the front porch or now hop from one end of the yard to the other end of the yard, things like that. It's just very simple. They're practicing their skills, their locomotor skills, and they're getting their exercise in. Um, low cost at things that you can do, go right to the Dollar General, get those little noodles that they have at Dollar General. They can play tag that way or balancing a sock or a little ball on the noodles things like that that they can do as far as fun activities. Um, kids love field day. We can make your own little miniature field day at home, get old uh, um, pillowcases, let them hop in the pillowcases, things like that. Get a rope, let them tie, you know, siblings legs up, do three-legged race. These are fun things that doesn't cost much. You can get hula hoops from the dollar store, do a hula hoop challenge that you can do. So those is a variety of different things that you can play that is low cost, no cost that the kids could enjoy. Mm -hmm. I wanna add one thing um, to what Angela said and my both of mine when they were younger and even now used to enjoy building obstacle courses. And now we're not talking about like an American Ninja Warrior <laughs> but they, they would do challenges, you know, to see how many times one could run around the tree or ju jump over little things that they had put down uh, in the yard. And as Angela said, especially for elementary, it is very important that they really get the foundation when it comes to locomotor skills uh, and also manipulative skills. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the challenges that we've had this year is many of our students have not had the opportunity to work on throwing or catching or kicking right. or you know many of those manipulative skills we think about that in terms of having fun and playing games, but that also aids in brain and cognitive development as well. Uh, I wanna also add play music. Music Definitely. is always fun. And depending on the tempo of the music, the tempo of the music will determine the speed at which you are active. Uh, when, I, when I'm teaching the students, even Anytime during PE, you will never find a slow song because I want them up. I want their activity to be moderate to vigorous. And what I mean by moderate to vigorous is on a scale of one to 10, moderate would be considered five. It means you are active. You can still carry on a conversation, but it's challenging. Vigorous would be about an eight, which means I'm active, but there is no way I'm going to be able to carry on a conversation. And that's one of the things that we, you know, we want children to be moderate to vigorous uh, because not only is it good exercise for their muscles, but their heart. The, mm -hmm. heart, the heart is key here. And we've got to make sure that heart is strong, just, just like any other part of the body. Correct. Mm -hmm. What is a quick... And I know, you know, it's quick is not always good, but what is a quick, healthy exercise regimen that parents can do with their children during the summer? Um, well, I always say don't reinvent the wheel. Um, it's already something out there that you can do. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll share my screen with you real quick. Um, Parents can quickly just go on to Google and type in, can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. You can go right in and type in exercise calendar for kids. And there is a plethora of different calendars that a lot of them are printable. Um, for example, this one right here 
um, and it has different exercises on there that they can do each day. And I would say um, after about two weeks of them doing one, you, you and it, your child can pick one out together. After them doing one for about two weeks, let them create their own calendar um, with their own exercises that they enjoy to do. And then also work together on building rewards for after they do maybe a week's worth of exercises or maybe three out of the five days, whatever goal you set, let them also contribute to the, ex the rewards that they would get for participating. It may be more Xbox time or more screen time on their cell phone or um, not having to do a chore at home maybe don't have to do dishes that day, things like that that you know that they're going to want um, as a reward, but let you guys build that together. These are just, a, again, easy, fun. Um, you can turn these into activities like a, a bingo game. After you do the calendars, you can make a bingo board with it um, and play games as you do exercises. These are different regiments that they can have. You don't have to really create it. It's already there for you to do. And I would also add, really the goal for uh, children all the way up to 18, and really I would say adults too, is to get up to 60 minutes of physical activity every day. And, but it doesn't mean it has to be continuous physical activity. The, the, the board that, Angela is sharing here, you can break that up into five minutes or 10 minutes. And before you know it, that starts to add up over the course of a day. And I would say pick three times during the day with your child, maybe first thing in the morning, lunchtime, and then dinner time, and pick three activities that would take 10 minutes to do. Now, for a parent that works, all they would have to do is FaceTime their, their child during that lunch break gives you a great little opportunity to connect with your child uh, or teenager and there are so many YouTube videos right now that's one of the positives that has come out of virtual teaching is it has created so much um, content on YouTube with just PE teachers and health professionals sharing all over the United States all over the world different activities I'm gonna real quickly I'm gonna see if I can get it to come back up I'm gonna share um, one that unfortunately I did not get to do it with the kids because it just came out. But uh, this is a uh, this is right off of YouTube. But it's uh, from a uh, let's see, it's called a uh, Be Well Played. But see, this is just an eight minute video, and I won't play the video. But there are different levels in this video, and there are, I have used so many of these different types of workouts this year with the students. But each level is like a video game and it gets a little bit harder. So you may have an interactive uh, activity where you're having to jump over something or duck or dodge or punch or kick and the children love it. Well, if you're on your lunch break, eight minutes, eight minutes, it gets you up and moving. It gets the child up and moving and you get to spend you know, time together doing the activities together. Just a minute. Is everybody still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See if I can get off of it now. Well, while you're trying to click, another um, thing that you can do is Go Noodle. Go Noodle is an excellent one. It has a variety of different uh, games that kids can play that are physically active um, that they can do. And American Heart Association is another one that you can chime in on that they have a lot of information in regards to not just staying active, moving, but then dealing with the nutrition as well. Mm -hmm. So again, you don't have to recreate anything. It's just all about knowing the resources and those are a few that, that you can tap into. Okay, well, we, um, give it another minute or so. So we've talked about exploring our community, going to some parks, um, 
seeing what has been developed outside since we've been inside of <laughs> doing some of our trails. We have splash pads. Um, there's some other activities, some parks we can go to, and then maybe picking up a few things that we can do at home, some activities, building our obstacle course. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, some challenges, who can do the most jumping jacks or who can run the fastest. I know I would not be in the... <laughs> But it's definitely something to consider doing to make sure we stay active. Do um, you think you have it set to share? Sometimes. Oh, I, I'm, I'm good. Are we back normal okay. screen now? <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't going to play it, but I just want everybody just to kind of see, you know, there, there's a lot of activities that you can pull from YouTube. Uh, I'll, I'll share a couple just in case uh, – somebody wants to look it up, but one is Coach Corey Martin. Another is RSD Online. These are ones that I've used this year that I, I can speak for, and the other is Be Well Played. Uh, every one of these are interactive. It is almost like being inside of a video game, but it's physical activity. Thank you for sharing that, um, that information with us. So as we get ready to wrap up, um, as adults, we can see the importance of health and diet, but we don't oftentimes seem to have time. Do you have any recommendations for parents for staying healthy along with their children? Well, I want to say this. Your children are going to copy what you do or you don't do. You know, so it, as adults, it is very easy for us to make excuses as to why we can't do it but our kids are going to see that and they're going to develop those same type of habits. So we have to make an excuse to be active or want to be healthy. Uh, your health is one of the most important things. If you lose it, it is very difficult to get it back. Uh, I'll share just a few things. Um, develop healthy eating habits. And what I mean by that is, you know, more fruits and vegetables, less processed foods. I know they taste good. Um, but, <laughs> but you have to be careful and, and put everything within moderation. I believe earlier it was mentioned, uh, Angela mentioned water, more water, less sugary drinks. Uh, it may take time if a child has been used to, you know, eating this, but add it in here and there. And before you know it, they'll actually start to want the healthier versions, you know, more so than some of the uh, junk foods. Ms. Holly, did you want to share any tips for our parents to incorporate more of a healthy lifestyle as well? Um, I would definitely say, um, I know that time is limited for a lot of the parents. So, um, just be mindful of the things that you're already doing. You're already grocery shopping. So like I said, when you grocery shop, grocery shop on the outside to get the fruits and vegetables um, first before you start shopping in the aisles to get that processed food that's high in sugar and sodium and fats. Um, I would say scheduling a time when you eat um, is also good. Uh, journaling. Um, some people don't like to write, but you have the My Fitness Pal that you can put right on your phone uh, that can track your eating and your exercise, and it's free. Um, that's another way to help you be mindful of the things that you're consuming. So, um, and eat in moderation is another one. You can do for the kids. The kids love to be in the kitchen with you. You would be surprised. So meal prepping together would be an excellent thing that you and your child can do, um, whether you are young or, or teenager, uh, meal prepping. Um, and I will also say another big key piece is if you can eat together. Instead of always eating and you know, one person's eating in the den, the other one's eating in their room, if you try to allot some time where the family is eating together, then without the devices, um, that plays a major part in so many ways. One, you can be mindful, you're paying attention and you know that your child is eating what needs to be, you know, what they need to eat. That's one. Two, it generates conversation. 
um, to where you can get to you know know what's going on with your child. That piggybacks on back to that mental health thing again. So you know what's going on with your child. Um, so those are some things that I would suggest and I would recommend when it comes to just eating your diet and exercise. And, and I agree with what Angela's saying. Uh, as much as possible, include your child in some of those, you know, decisions, because let it be a decision that they, they take up themselves. Um, I wanted to also add reduced sedentary time. Mm -hmm. uh, the average child, eight, eight to 10 years old, spends about six hours a day on the screen. And that's not including school. The average teenager is about seven and a half to nine hours. If you take that over the course of a year, that means a child has been uh, 24 hours a day for 114 days out of a year on a screen. You know, so it, we're, we're in a different generation where that is much more available, but be conscious about how much screen time that they have and set a limit, you know, to that screen time. And the other thing I would add also is get enough sleep. Yeah. Uh, I think it was mentioned earlier. I had it, it is amazing in elementary school the number of children that tell me that they're always tired. Now I can understand a teenager saying that, but to hear a child chronically are tired uh, is an amazing thing. Uh, elementary age should be getting anywhere between nine and twelve hours of sleep a night, and most of them do not get that. So, you know, limit that screen time and cut off everything in at least an hour before bed. And I would say that to the adults as well. Um, you know, avoid caffeine before bed. Sleep is an important thing. And if we just don't get enough of it, it's going to affect everything from the moment we wake up throughout the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. um, when Real quick, when he was talking about uh, the screen time, when the kids are in front of the computer or in front of the TV, um, be intentional about your movements. I would say during commercials is a good time to where they can get up and move around. Um, let that be a part of the challenges that you do. At, during every commercial, I'll do so-and-so amount of jumping jacks or a certain amount of sit-ups, or I need to go, you know, the kids, let them run around a little bit and come on back. So just being intentional about moving, that's for the kids as well as the adults. Um, and a lot of us have our Fitbits and our apps, our Apple Watches that tell us to stand up at a certain time. Don't ignore that. When it hits you, get up and do that. So that's very important. Thank you so much. You both have shared valuable information on